Indian state government makes Hindu scripture part of curriculum for grades 6 through 12. On March 17th, during a legislative assembly, the state government of Gujarat, India, announced that the Hindu holy scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, will be integrated into the compulsory curriculum for grades 6 through grade 12 students. During a press conference, Jitu Vag, uh, Vaghani, uh, Jugrat's education minister explained that despite the Bhagavad Gita being a Hindu scripture, quote, all faiths have accepted the moral values and principles outlined. What? <laughs> when? The announcement was quickly condemned by representatives from other religions, despite Vaghani's claims that other faiths had accepted the state's decision. Cedric, uh, Prakash, a Jesuit priest, accused Jugarat's government of majoritarianism by stating, quote, the study of any and every religion or holy book needs to be welcomed, uh, needs to be welcomed at all times. But introducing only the study of the Bhagavad Gita smacks of majoritarianism. A.C. Michael, the founder of the United Christian Forum in India, recommended that students should be given the option to choose which religious scripture they can learn about. After Jugarat's announcement, the state of Karnataka, as, uh, Karnataka's assembly recently also uh, is also considering establishing the same policy. If passed, Karnataka's curriculum will make the Bhagavad Gita compulsory for all grade levels. Even even non like Muslim kids have to learn this, for example. This is non-optional. So you're Okay, how, how is this not going to start a riot? Like, are Muslims in India, I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming Muslims in India are going to be very upset about their kids being forced to learn the Gita. No? Is this not going to cause, like, how is, like, so, like, okay, I don't know. I don't want to make any blanket statement about Muslims, okay? But my, the way I've seen things work out around the world getting Muslims, forcing Muslim kids to study pagan scripture is not going to end well. <laughs> I don't know if that's some, maybe I'm making a slippery slope fallacy here or not, but like, I don't know, this is, this doesn't seem that's going to end well. What do you think? Um, well, I think you're on the right track because it should, so th the geolocation of this is extremely important to the story. So it should be remembered that and by the way i know i pronounced jugarat wrong okay it's difficult for me okay <laughs> anyways should be noted that in jugarat 20 years ago that is the state where there were deadly riots that many will label and uh describe as a religious pogrom where thousands of people were killed mostly muslims over interreligious communal violence these are a notorious series of riots that recent, the, the, the anniversary, the 20th anniversary of which occurred recently, that are still a very sore and contentious spot on the Indian collective consciousness. And it should also be noted that the chief minister of the state at that time was the now prime minister, Narendra Modi. And he has been accused of intentionally allowing the violence to continue or being complicit in the violence and death that killed thousands and thousands of people. Um, so the fact that this is happening in that state is a very important part of this story. Um, it is also very important to talk about how, so since this was announced in Jugrat, then uh, the state of Karnataka came forward and was like, oh, well, we're going to consider this same policy. Now, <sighs> the fact that this is, you know, possibly being proposed in Karnataka is rich. It is hypocritical to the extreme because I would like people to, you know, think back about this recent hijab controversy that we have been talking about on the news frequently over the past few months. Um, this hijab controversy where there's, you know, so much contention over our government, government schools allowed to ban 
the hijab in the classroom, aka ban a religious symbol in the classroom, is that allowed? Are they allowed to do that? The high court of that state ruled yes, um, because they ruled that the hijab is not an essential article of Islam which it was based on previous precedent. But part of that debate about the hijab in the classroom was all about secularism in the classroom. Is this against India's secularism? Is in and, and um the mandates of a secular environment in the school environment and you know equality and making, you know, drawing attention to differences between communities and all this stuff. And those were a lot of excuses used in allowing the banning of the hijab in the classroom. This same state that apparently, supposedly, cares so much about secularism is now considering making Hindu holy scripture compulsory across all grade levels. Oh, they care about secularism, like, my, my behind. It's, it's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Wasn't there argument for allowing the ban on hijab in schools that it's not a necessary... Okay, so we have Hindutva telling Muslims what is mandatory in Islam, okay? So they decided to tell mm -hmm. Muslims that hijab is not a mandatory part of your religion, right? But and that's why it's okay to ban the hijab in schools right and the reason i think they use that line is because they're saying because they know that they can't go full secular on muslims and say like we're banning the hijab because we don't allow religious symbols because they are not going to be able to apply the same logic to the turban because it would be it would it, they would they wouldn't even dare ban turbans in schools okay they wouldn't dare ban turbans in schools so they're like okay well, what do we do we can't use secular the sikh turban the sikh turban right so they were like what can we so i think what ha was happening is like we can't say like we don't allow religious symbols because there's no way that we could ban the tur sikh turban so they, they 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 come up with this excuse of saying it has to be a mandatory in your religion right so given that hijab is not mentioned in the quran well, I mean, it's kind of mentioned, but it's not clear. Um, we're going to say that this is not mandatory in your religion, so we don't allow, uh, so we, it's, it's bannable, but the turban is like, mand like it's a necessary part of Sikhism, so we, al we can't let ban that in schools. So I think that that's what they came, I think that might be the reason why they use that line of reasoning, right? So, but based on their own arguments, okay, Hinduism, there's nothing in Hinduism that makes it mandatory for you to teach the Gitas to children. The the, the Gita to children. In fact, historically, it's been very taboo. For it has it? Yeah, it I mean, would. remember when we were learning about Hinduism on those courses online, and it talked about how you know the the Aryan script, the Sanskrit, is so holy that like only certain castes are allowed to even hear the words of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think that's about the Vedas. I don't. I'm not sure if that's about the Gita. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, anyways, but we know for sure that there's nothing in Hinduism that makes it mandatory for you to to, to learn the Gita, the, the Bhagavad Gita, right? There's no, there's nothing. So it's not an it's not a mandatory. In general, in part. Hinduism, there is a great de-emphasis on learning textual scripture. Yeah. So, okay. So your school should be able to ban teaching the Gita, but you can't do that because you made it mandatory. So you guys, like, I don't understand, like. Can you be any more hypocritical? Like, I don't understand. Like, it's so unbelievable. Is there, can somebody make it this more clear for us? Because I don't know how they can get away with this being so contradictory. So obviously, you know, biased towards Hinduism. Like, are they even trying to hide it? Like, they're not even trying to hide it. Like, they're not like, really. yeah, they're laughing at us. So like, yeah, look at these people trying to expose us for like being oppressive towards other ones and being pro-Hindu. Like, oh, you got us. <laughs> Like I think they're like oh, I think they're... <laughs> oh no, what a bro. bad accusation! <laughs> no, no, really? Oh my God, you got us! Like I think they're just being fully transparent about it. I don't understand. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. Sick. One thing that I want to touch on in, is in terms of like the reasoning behind the the hijab ruling. Um, I think the 
uh, explicit reasoning behind it is not exactly what you were saying. The explicit reasoning about ruling on if it's um, essential or obligatory has more to do with previous precedents um, that have been unfolding over decades about what um, religious symbols are allowed or not allowed and when the state can intervene and when it can't. Um, but I think maybe behind the scenes, there was a lot of motivation or, you know, um, implicitly, there was a lot of that, potentially a lot of that motivation that you were saying. Um, now, now, the excuse that the government is giving is that this is okay because, quote, all faiths have ex accepted the moral values and principles outlined, you know, in this book, in this scripture. Well, if that's the case, you could be mandate, make it compulsory to study other religious texts as well, because every religion has some portion of it that other religions will also approve of and agree on, right? Like the golden rule, so and so, you know, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Like that, th that idea or that concept appears literally in every culture around the world. Um, so, uh, you know, this idea of, oh, well, if other, we other people have accepted these values and therefore we can talk about that. Well, then what about like Islam? Like, should you also be teaching about in Islam, you know, taking care of orphans or almsgiving. Almsgiving is promoted in pretty much every faith. Um, donating to the poor, caring for the needy, that's promoted in every faith that I'm aware of. That should also mean that other faiths should be included. Um, and here's the thing. I um, The way that this could be taught or talked about is very sketchy because the way that it's discussed in the news and by these representatives is says explicitly that this will be taught in such a way that students will have an interest and a desire to want to learn about these things now to me that sounds highly biased if we're my preference is that if we're teaching about religions in schools it should not be in any ways to promote values it should only be to ex like explain the presence of values and it explain historical context in the history and development of faiths purely historical objective analysis it should not be to promote any certain values and they're also trying to get away with this by saying that this is a part of indian culture and history and so really we're just promoting indian history well other faiths in India have a great depth of history and scholars of India from India of different faiths have contributed greatly to the expansion and knowledge and scholarship of these faiths. So that is also part of Indian culture and also part of Indian history. So their own arguments and excuses are just, they fall through immediately. Okay. So before we go to the comments, because I started a whole bunch of comments, I also want to mention, so you said that the, uh, all other, their claim is that other religions have accepted the values of the Gita, right? Quote, all faiths have accept, accepted the moral values and principles outlined. Okay, that is like, I don't know if you're familiar with Islam <laughs> because they are not at all pro Gita. Like, which values? Because this is the Gita is violent fun it's castist just a second let me finish my point please no it's like islam is very sensitive about idol worship or shirk like you specific this this entire book bhagavad gita is about krishna okay talking to arjun okay Krish this is like the highest degree of shirk in islam there's no bigger sin there's nothing more evil and disgusting and abhorrent and disgusting you know in islam this is you can't get worse than this when you have somebody like something in the human form claiming to be a god talking to a human you know it goes against the essence and fundamentals of islam like for you to tell muslims like oh yeah you accept the values of this book like have you met islam there's you know this <laughs> this is like completely the opposite of what they are uh ag agree with okay and also i don't know which values of the gita you're like i don't think a, a lot of people think like bhagavad gita is about like love and compassion and i don't know or ego death ego death or you know 
following your duty. But it's because these people haven't read the Gita. This is like one of the most violent. I would say this is the most violent scripture there is. Okay. I did a, a stream on it, uh, you know, a while back. I don't know what the stream was called. Is I think if you search for Hinduism violence, it should come up. But the, I, I, I am actually convinced that the Gita is more uh, violent than the Quran. I know, like in practice, it doesn't end up like that because not that many Hindus take their scripture as seriously. Um, you know, but at least as, on paper, um, on paper, this is like this book. Yeah, it just search for Hinduism violence and atheist republic. And I think that the video is, is it. So the title of the video that I did is called Is Hinduism the Most Violent Religion? Okay. If you read this book, this is like this book excuses genocide. Okay. For the sake of just following your duty, you know, just following orders, uh, just following your karma. It's absolutely insane. This it's it's unbelievable how many people who are not even Hindu celebrate this book without even reading it as a book full of wisdom. This is the most disgusting book that there is the, among all scripture. And I know, and I, again, Islam is Quran is extremely violent. Okay, but among all scripture, nothing gets more as more violent and disgusting um, as the Gita. Okay, and they are celebrating this book as something that is supposed to have good values in it. It's unbelievable. Um, no, yeah, it, somebody it, said, in, it, yeah, it's Karnataka? worse than Christianity. Worse. Yeah, go ahead. In Karnataka, if it does become part of the education curriculum it would be can it would be um taught under the subject titled moral sciences unbelievable um yeah somebody christopher is saying Ar Ar um, armin arjuna is at war with relatives not other ethnic groups or religions um okay so yeah so maybe okay so i should say technically i should have said it excuses mass murder not genocide okay sure Mass it excuses mass murder because it's not based on any ethnicity. Okay, so fair, fair point. Uh, yes, it's uh, he's killing his own relatives, and he's like Arjuna. Actually, if you read the story, Arjuna comes across as the guy that is like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to shed blood. Um, I, I, this is wrong. These are my family. Okay, like what good could come from this? Like he's the he's person distraught. for. Yeah, he's like, this is bad. This is wrong. And God, Krishna comes and like it tells him, no, that is okay. That you should your you your caste determines that you're a warrior, that you should, this is your duty, you should shed blood. And he and tells, they've already died. They already died because the future is already determined. And he tells Krishna it tells Krishna tells Arjun that nobody actually dies. So it's okay to murder these people because dying is just basically the same as you changing your clothes because the soul will persist like imagine that line of reasoning like it does it, he doesn't even care about what the goal of the killing is it's all about just you you just follow your duty you don't question your your dharma you, you, it's the way you do you don't question the dharma this is your duty this is your caste this is the role that the universe has determined for you you just do what you're supposed to do without questioning it and don't worry about people dying it doesn't even matter if they're guilty or not because at the end of the day people dying is just souls changing their cold their clothes just going from one body to another one imagine the, having that mentality over what murder and then he confesses Arjun, Arjun, who was at the beginning of the story, somebody that was for peace, for not killing. At the end of it, he's, he, he gets convinced that this is, it's okay to just kill your own family and goes to war. The whole entire book is about convincing somebody that was for on the side of peace. By the end of it, God convinces him to be on the side of war. This is worse than the Abrahamic books where, like, God is convincing. Like, this is, like, at least, okay, so the Abrahamic um, scripture it also convinces you of mass violence okay but it tells you like oh these are you're the good guys and those are the bad guys okay and the excuses are terrible but it at least tells you that oh we're good they're bad if you read the bhagavad gita is like it doesn't really matter they could be the good guys okay you could lose we could determine that they win and you could be the bad you know they could be good people okay but it doesn't matter this is what your role is just go do your job 
Okay, it's, it's even more horrible than Abrahamic religions. It's, it's unbelievably disgusting. Anyways, there's a whole bunch of star yeah. comments. Did you want to add anything? Katie is bringing up the very good point, and so many people still don't get how reincarnation could be an extremely regressive idea. Right. I completely agree. Yeah, I agree. That's um, a great point. Stormy is saying the simple fact is that none of these politicians have any read ever read any Hindu scripture. They they just want to use these books to beat up others and whip up a frenzy, and stir up support for from their base. Yeah. Um, Bengali Hindu, you know, one of our local Hindu supporters is saying either all religious books should be allowed or none of the religious books should be allowed. None, please. Uh, I think the way religious religious books could be allowed in schools if it's uh, in college and being studied from a secular perspective, like th not like if you're studying scripture as a way to study history, uh, that's fine. Okay, not part of but not part of like a val like not part of a curriculum as if like these are good values. Like if you're studying the Quran or Gita or Christianity, it can't be a propaganda for these religious scripture. It could be like let's study the Quran from a literature perspective or from a historical perspective or the Bible or the Gita. But not the school shouldn't be used as a way to like advertise these scriptures as a source of morality and you can see by the way that they're talking about teaching gita it's not about like studying history or culture um or literature it's about using gita as as a source of values which is exactly the way we're we're opposed to that yeah there's Everybody a really dumb that. comment by james smith that i think we should address yeah. saying also are you guys in india and why do you care if they ban them over there aren't you from canada shouldn't you be more worried about how the canadian government tried to cover up catholic crimes to indigenous children well james we already freaking covered that on the channel frequently second of all armin please take it away with tearing up this first comment yeah this is insane james unlike first of all this is a fake name this guy is from india right uh as as he himself is saying james unlike you okay most of us here have the capacity to care about our other people whether they share a country with us or not okay i don't i don't i don't know if you have enough kindness or sympathy in, inside you to be able to uh, care about people that don't live in your country but i'm sure like you don't unlike you most indians care about people outside of their borders okay and just like many indians who care about other people outside of the borders of their country we also care about people like do you really think like as a canadian i should only care about canadians how insane how psychopathic will you have to be how much full of emotion how much like empty of emotion and care that you have to be for your fellow human beings to think like us like you only have to like you care only about indians so you think other people like me like just because i'm canadian I, I should only care about canadians well no like we actually care about other humans okay we care about indians we care about people who live in india i know it might be a, such a foreign concept to you because you don't have enough care in, in in your mind for other people but people in india they are human beings and we love our fellow human beings so we care for them okay and i'm pretty sure many indians care for canadians many indians for, care for people in iran or in saudi arabia or in russia or in ukraine okay they have more sympathy i'm glad to say that most indians are not like you i'm glad to say that most indians have the capacity to understand what it means to care about people that don't share the same borders share, share the same country with you yeah what can i say we're just not as tribalistic as you are uh misha is saying yeah. why do you have to be living in a country to care about it right yeah yeah and also what why are you being such a hypocrite like if we're in canada and you're in india then why are you talking about us why are you commenting about us shouldn't you be talking why about do you care india? about the catholic crimes huh yeah why how, yeah why are you even talking about the catholic crimes that didn't happen in india so why are you being such a hypocrite and talking about something that didn't happen in in india yeah. Well, in other and news, we should quickly celebrate the fact that, uh, how do, would you say this? Danila, Danila just became a new member of our YouTube channel. Thank which you. Which is so a good much. reminder to tell everyone 
that now that uh, we are monetized again, if you become a member, we give extra special priority to your comments in the live chat and you have access to badges that we'll be producing soon and uh, emojis will be coming soon as well. Oh yeah. Exclusive emojis. Thank you for so becoming thank you. a member. Well, it became Satan's minion. Yeah, guys, if you <laughs> if you if you are members, then we'll highlight your comments. Uh, we'll it, it helps us to notice your comments more. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Abhabi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.